Hi guys, today's video we're going to talk a little bit about how to get a music method book published. And I've done it five times. They're all published with Hudson Music. If you watch the channel you know this because I plug them all the time. Uh, the first one I ever got published was this double bass book. Um, I also have a rudiment book out. I have a thrash metal book out. And I have a book coming out this month. Uh, officially coming, I soft released it earlier, but it's officially coming out on counting and subdivision, and I have a book out on um, drum and bass breakbeats. So first step, of course, is having a book worth publishing. So I can't overstate that. You have to write a good book, make it look reasonable so that people like can learn the information that you've gotten in there, and it has to be something that isn't already covered in another book. And this is probably the point that they make the most in like blogs and articles on how to get published for nonfiction in general. Um, but it's worth hammering home. If, if your book already exists by someone else more famous or a book that people are already comfortable buying, they're not going to buy yours. So you can't write a better stick control than Stone already wrote. You can't write a better syncopation than Reed already wrote. You can't write a better Chapin book than Chapin already wrote. And that's not because it, that you physically can't do it. You probably could if you were really smart. But no one would buy it anyway because those books have been staples for like many decades. right? They already exist and people are already comfortable buying them. You won't change their mind. So you've got to find a niche where you really, really can write something substantially better than what's there. Or you've got to find a book that hasn't already been written and write it. Now, with my books, I told you what they're all about. Um, my double bass book, there are double bass books that exist. That is a thing, but mine talks about stuff that pretty much none of the other books talk about. It is completely ignored in almost every other book. Um, my rudiment book here, this is my most popular book. There are more rudiments in here than any other book, and there's a whole bunch of rudiments that don't show up in any other books written in the past century. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of hybrids in here that are really not in many or any books that I just collected uh, from around the sort of marching arts world. And it's really hard to get them all in one place, even if you buy five other books. So there's my niche. Like, that's why that one works. Um, they all have sort of a niche like that. So then what do you do once you have that book that is the correct book for the niche and is well written, etc.? Well, um, the first thing I would say, quite honestly, is self-publish the first one. That's what I did. Um, you can self-publish easily. There's things like Amazon uh, Kindle Direct Publishing. There's Book Baby. There's a couple other things like that. And then you can see if people want to buy that product. Um, the best way, honestly, to show a publisher that you're serious is to have already sold books. You have a track record of sales. If you go in and say, yes, I self-published this book on Amazon, which I did, and I have been selling copies for X amount of time regularly, they will think, oh, you know, that makes sense. We might want to pick up something that has already sold without the weight of our name being on it. And so adding a publisher and their resources can only help that. Um, you don't have to self-publish. You could just send it to people and see if someone says yes. But it's, it's unlikely, again, if you're unknown, for them to go, oh, yeah, this unknown weirdo with this book that I've never heard of, yeah, we'll just publish that. It's better if you can say, yeah, I've, I've already sold a bunch of copies, so you know it's going to work. Related to having self-published, it is the fact that at least Hudson, my publisher, really likes when you come to them with a finished product. You don't show up with an idea or a few pages of handwritten notes. No, you come with a book they can sell. That's how I got all of my books published. I said, here is a book that you can sell. It is ready for you. And they said, okay, let's do it. They didn't have to expend time and energy formatting it, engraving it, editing it, doing the, um, the digital you know, work involved in setting up a book. It just already existed. They could put it in their store. Boom. So I'm not sure that every publisher is like that. In fact, I know that Hal Leonard isn't, but like, good luck getting a book on Hal Leonard. They do not accept submissions, from what I understand. But, if, for say, if, for example, if Hal Leonard contacted you and asked you to write a book, they have very specific guidelines and they work with you really closely. I know a guy who's done it. So, 
it's different in different publishers, but a lot of the time you could at least give them a, a, a product and they could tweak it to their needs. But they want to see that you've put in work to make it functional, not just that you have something on the back of an envelope. Okay, so say you did self-publish a book or you had a book that was just so great you didn't need to do that step and you had it in a finished product ready for presentation. How do you approach publishers? Well, first of all, you have to decide if the publishers you want to approach are even accepting submissions. Like I said, Hal Leonard doesn't accept submissions at all. They will ask you, you don't ask them. A lot of publishers are only accepting band and choir and orchestra music right now. They're not accepting the instructional materials. You gotta check. If you send something to someone who's not accepting it, it's not like they're gonna go, oh wow, this is so amazing, we'll break our rules. They're probably just gonna delete the email or chuck the manuscript in the trash because they don't want it. They're not gonna spend time looking at it to see how great it is. You know, you can't like get around that really. A lot of the time they're just gonna be like, yeah, nope, and, and throw it away. The other thing is, uh, when you find a publisher who is accepting submissions, who you think you'd like to work with, you really need to double check their catalog of books and see if that book you're trying to sell them already exists. Like we already talked about finding a niche. And sometimes your niche is very similar to another niche, but it's really different, like you, you did your homework, but you need to prove that. So one of the best practices for any type of book submission, realistically, is to acknowledge and mention the other books that are already kind of like your book and then prove how yours is different. So if you wrote a book that was like Realistic Rock, but was even more realistic, you, you have to acknowledge, yes, Realistic Rock is a thing, but mine is different, and here's how. If you just try to ignore it, the publishers, they're in this industry, they know about Realistic Rock. They're going to go, yeah, Realistic Rock already exists. This is probably the same, and they're going to chuck yours. You have to prove that it's not the same. You also have to prove why you're the person who should write this book. If you're going to write a book about samba music and you've never played samba, never been to Brazil, don't have experience in a samba band of any type, um, they're going to maybe wonder, well, yeah, maybe we need a samba book, but why your samba book? Before they even check if it's good, right? So if you don't have some credentials in that field of some kind, you might be at a loss. Um, the other thing you got to do is you have to really sell the concept, not just that it's different than other books, but that drummers will like it in a general sense. Why would the average drummer pick up that book and go, yeah, I'm going to spend the 15 to $35 or whatever method books cost these days um, to get this book versus the 10,000 other ones? If you can make those cases, why it's different from things that are similar, why it's uh, worthwhile to the average drummer, and why you're the person whose authority on this should be trusted, then they'll probably even look at the book and see if it's good. So essentially, to make a finished product, things you're gonna need, Finale, Sibelius, Muse Score, something to make notation. You're gonna need um, a program that allows you to lay it out. I use Adobe InDesign. Doesn't have to be that, but there are other ones, but a graphic design type program. Um, and you're probably going to need Photoshop if there are pictures or diagrams of some sort. Or maybe Illustrator, depending on what you're trying to do. Or a program like that, Painter or something else. Now, that in itself is sort of a hurdle to some people. So what you could do is you could find someone who has that expertise or has spent the money on those programs already to help you. And that's fine. The most recent book that I, that I published uh, that's coming out, it's coming out this month technically, Subdivide and Conquer, it uh, was actually the idea of another drummer, Robert Miller, and he had it like 90% done. He decided to work with me to get it 100% done so that, like I said, we could give Hudson um, or whatever publisher, we actually contacted a few different ones, uh, the finished product and say, here, it's ready for publication. Do you want to publish it? And Hudson did come back around and say, yes, they did, which is good for us. Um, it's great for, for Robert because he had never published a book before, and he didn't have that street credibility or that uh, track record of sales or any of that. So he was able to use my expertise and a little bit of piggyback on my previous publications to get his project published. So um, I did add some to it, but it's mostly him. 
Um, but I really sort of almost worked like an author slash agent to get that publication deal to go through. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. It's probably getting to be kind of a long video at this point. Um, but to recap, just super summarize, find a niche, do a good job at it, be someone who even nominally would be uh, representative of an authority on that topic. Um, try to have a track record of sales or success somewhere first. Approach publishers with a finished product. Be able to show why your book is different and better than anything else that's even remotely similar to it. And uh, then just try your luck. You know, the worst they can say is no. So just go out there and see what you can get done. Um, if you have specific questions, you can ask me and I'll answer to the best of my ability. I don't think that anything about publishing is a secret, really. It honestly is just having something worth selling and finding a way to pitch it to someone so they believe that it's worth selling also, right? That's how anything works. But drum books and music books in a general sense are also like that. So thanks for watching. Take it easy and uh, see you guys next time.